Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to go over my most used art supplies. I do have quite a lot of stuff that only gets used occasionally and not much of that's going to get featured in this video. If you do want to see everything I have, I do workstation tours every year, so I'll leave a link in the video description if you want to watch the 2015 desk tour, but just a warning, it's almost an hour long because I go through everything. In this video, we're just going to focus on the main items I use. And I just want to say one thing off the start is that a lot of people tend to get really preoccupied with what an artist that they like is using for supplies. They just need to know what is that exact pencil you're using, what is that exact eraser. I don't know if they just think if they have those same supplies then their art will be better, but that's not the case. What brand you use is up to you. and. Um, for some things, quality is more important than others, so I don't know, it's really up to you to judge what you want and what you don't want. So starting with paper, since that's where art starts, um, this is kind of my go-to sketchbook right now for when I do art for videos because this has perforated paper, and by the way, it's the Canson Sketch Universal. I don't really like these coil rings though, but um, I'll get to that later. So this is kind of nice because the pages are perforated and so you can actually see that I've torn out this page before and now it's taped back in. So that's pretty nice. I wanted to sketch it in here and then I want to tear it out so I could ink it onto a new piece of paper and then I could just put it right back into the sketchbook. So that's why I like using this sketchbook when I'm going to do YouTube videos. and. Other paper that I use for sketching is just regular printer paper, nothing fancy at all. It's either in a sketchbook or it's on just crappy little paper for my sketches. I'm not a huge fan of the coil though, especially since I'm left-handed, and so I've since moved on to hardcover sketchbooks. I have a few. <laughs> this is one that hasn't been sketched in yet, but again, I don't really care for the brand. I just, if it looks nice, it's hardcover, it's what I want. Paper's nice and smooth, okay, I'll get it, you know. I'm not that picky when it comes to sketchbooks since I'm not doing anything too fancy on them and it's not something that's gonna get sold. For my marker illustrations, I use Express It Blending Card. It's not much to look at. I don't have the original packaging, but it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in white and it's, it's like a cardstock and it works really, really nicely with markers. And I was fortunate enough that this was one of the, actually this was the very first marker paper I ever used other than white printer paper. And I just stuck with it ever since because it's that good. <laughs> so I haven't tried that many different papers, but I really, really like this one. So I'm sticking with it. For watercolor paintings and pencil crayon drawings, I use either watercolor paper or Bristol paper. Uh, I wouldn't specifically recommend this exact paper. This is just what I have. I've had it for ages. So it's Canson Watercolor Aquarelle Cold Press Paper. And it doesn't have a ton of texture to it, but there's enough. There's a bit of texture there. So I'll use both for both mediums, just interchangeably. Bristol's also good for markers too. I like the smooth Bristol. It's nice and thick. It's thicker than the Express It blending card. And so it's quite nice. All right, let's move on to pencils. So for sketching, I really don't care what pencil I use. <laughs> uh, this is just a regular HB pencil. Look, it says Shopper's Drug Mart on it. This is just one of several pencils I might reach for when I'm drawing. And then this is actually one that was sent to me by a viewer. Again, it's an HB pencil. This one's Karen Dash, so it's a little nicer than this one. But um, again, I'm not picky when I'm sketching. I also sometimes use mechanical pencils. Uh, this is a this is the fancy one I have. It's the Rotring 600 pencil. It's nice. It's got a metal body. I did a whole review video on it if you want to look at that. But I just like it, it's nice, but again, if there's any mechanical pencil near me, I'll grab it and use it. And so these are nice for tightening up your lines and doing precision sketches. Other pencils I use for sketching are the Prismacolor Cauli Race pencils. They do erase if you press really lightly, but you know, it's, it's kind of like any colored pencil. 
where it doesn't fully erase. I have a whole bunch of different colors for these because I don't only use them for sketching, I'll use them to color in parts of my drawings. Typically, if I, it's more typical if I'm doing a marker drawing that I'll use these to then add a bit of detail on top. I don't use these for full color, like full pencil illustrations, just for sketching or adding details. So yeah, what's nice about these is they're nice and waxy and that's why they're often used for sketching. So sometimes I will start sketching directly in graphite or sometimes I will use these, start my sketch and then I'll refine the sketch in graphite. And the reason I do that is because it separates the two layers of the sketch. You can do your clean sketch on top of the messy sketch without having to go through and erase everything to clean it up. I also got into the habit of using these for when I went to school for animation because these glide nicely on animation paper and so they're really nice for the quick animation sketches. So. I really like those. If I'm going to be sketching and shading something in pencil, then I typically gravitate towards the Stedler Mars Lumograph pencils. It's just a really common and popular brand of pencils. It's got some softer leads for darker shading and stuff. I don't use these a ton, but it's what I use if I'm going for more realism and shading in pencil. But I've been so into coloring pictures these days that I haven't used these in quite a while. To sharpen my pencils, Mars Lumograph sharpener. There's an old Hello Kitty sticker on it, but I have this and I put a piece of tape on the back so that the lid doesn't come off because it was getting a little bit loose and I can still pop it off to dump it even with the tape on. So that's what I use for sharpening. I would like to get an electric sharpener though. I think that would be cool. For erasers, it's a little similar to pencils where I'll just grab whatever's around me. So I might be grabbing this random little white bit of eraser or I might grab a regular pink eraser, but some of the erasers that are my go-to ones are this. This is my favorite eraser that I use. It's a Pentel Click Eraser, and it's sort of like a mechanical pencil or I guess like an X-Acto blade or something where uh, it retracts and comes out and stuff, and you can buy refills for it. It's just a long skinny eraser, and so it's nice for erasing uh, smaller details, but it's not so small that you can't erase slightly larger areas too. So there's that. If I want to erase even smaller areas, I do have this electric eraser. Again, Stedler. It's a very <laughs> popular brand, I guess. And it's smaller, so I can erase smaller things. Plus, you don't have to go side to side to erase. You just push a button and it rotates. So you can get an even smaller area because all you have to do is just touch the paper. You don't have to move your arm side to side. The only thing is you have to make sure the eraser's clean because sometimes if there's a bunch of lead and crud on it, it can actually just make an unerasable smudge on your paper. So that's one thing to watch out for with these. If I really want to clean up my sketch, I often go for kneaded erasers because you can lighten up your pencil lines without smearing them everywhere. And it's just a good way to clean it up because if, if you have an eraser where you need to rub, you might erase too much of your lines. If you just want to lighten it up a little bit before going in and fixing the sketch, you can just press and lift off some pencil that way. And I believe this one is the Prismacolor brand. Now let's move on to inking supplies. I do have some dip pens, but I'm not going to bother showing those because I really don't use them anymore. I like to use multi-liners, and so those are just pens that come in different size nibs. And now I almost... I exclusively use my Copic multiliners actually. I have some Sakura Micron pens, the Pigma Microns, but I honestly don't even use those anymore. I just use my Copic ones, mostly because I do mostly Copic art, but now I find that even if I'm doing something in pencil, I will ink it with these. So um, mostly I go with these ones just because, I don't know, my um, Copic Multiliner SP pens have been a little fussy. These ones have replaceable nibs, replaceable ink cartridges, and uh, they're more expensive. These ones are much cheaper, but nothing's replaceable. Once the ink is run out, you just chuck it out. But I've had a lot better success with these ones for some reason. And so you'll see mostly in my videos, I'm grabbing for this dark gray one because, I don't know, they're just nice. <laughs> so these are my go-to multiliners. And I actually somewhat recently got the Pentel brush pen. And um, I've used it for three different artworks so far. So I haven't had a ton of practice with it, but I already love it so much that I think it deserves a feature in this video. So it has actual bristles 
which is really nice and super black ink it's just a really nice brush pen and I got the hang of it quite quickly so I really like this one for doing more brushy effects and that's really all I use for inking is just the multi liners and this now let's move on to coloring supplies let's start off with my go-to medium my Copic markers these are considered top of the line alcohol based art markers they're dual ended I mostly just use the brush end but these are great and it's one of my favorite things to use because it's not real messy I don't have to worry about washing paint brushes and all that they're just they're nice they're really handy to use and uh, one of my favorite things to color with I have a ton of different colors and also have refills for them so yes I love my Copics Another thing you might see me coloring with is my Prismacolor Premier Pencils. I have 120 set. I actually would really like to try the Faber-Castell Polychromos, but these are not that used. You can see, I mean, I feel like I've used them tons of times, but I have so many colors that it's lasting me a really long time. So considering I don't do that much pencil work, I really want to hold off on trying a new brand. I also got this colorless blender which I purchased separately to blend in colors. The same way some people use white to just blend everything in, um, it's better to use a colorless blender because it doesn't whiten everything. So yeah, these are all the colors, yeah, you get the gist of it. So that's what you'll mostly see me using in my pencil work. The reason I want to try out another brand is because these have really soft leads and so it's hard to keep them sharpened to a fine point. Plus, I find that the lead breaks quite easily, so I just like to try a different brand that Faber-Castell Polychromos, I think those look really good, so yeah, but uh, for now, this is what I use. If you see me using acrylics in my videos, it's these Chroma Artist Acrylics. They're made here in Vancouver, and as far as I know, based on what it says on their website, they don't sell through other companies and stuff. You can only get it directly from them, so... Yeah, this is probably a hard brand to find. I don't specifically recommend this. These are the only acrylics I own other than some dollar store ones. So <laughs> I'm not sure how they stack up against other brands, but that's what I use. For watercolor paints, I use these PBO watercolors and I have this set of 24 half pans. And these aren't very expensive at all. I got this kit for something like $35. I was looking it up online and I saw a place selling it for 40 and that's here in Canada. That's the price So um, it's nothing too fancy, but I like them. I don't do all that much watercolor work, but When I do this is what I'm using the next set of paint is Oil paints and I actually haven't done any oil paintings yet. I just got these these are the Holbein duo aqua oil water soluble oil paints so it's a bit different than regular oils and um, yeah I haven't used these yet but I'm going to be in upcoming videos so I figured I would mention it here just so people know what I'm using for brushes uh, <laughs> I just have random ones <laughs> these are just some of the brushes I have uh, I use these for watercolors and acrylics I'm gonna get different brushes though for my oil paints so, well, I guess we want to know the brands. <laughs> uh, Royal Soft Grip, Windsor & Newton, Simply Simmons, never heard of that before. Again, Royal Dynasty, just, just random assortments. I'm not that picky when it comes to paint brushes. Now for some random supplies, one of the things you might see me using in my videos is a syringe. And I use these for dripping alcohol on, like just rubbing alcohol or Copic Colorless Blender onto my marker illustrations. And it creates a really cool effect. But yeah, it's just an art syringe. It's not pointy on the tip. <laughs> it's not dangerous, don't worry. But it can create some really cool effects. You also might see me using a light box to trace my artwork onto new paper. And I have no idea what brand this is. People always ask me and I, I never have an answer. I even tried looking up the model number and everything to see what would come up and I couldn't find anything. So, sorry. <laughs> I don't know the brand, but it's just a box that lights up. Oh, hey, it is plugged in. <laughs> and when I do use it, I typically shut off all my lamps so I can see better. And it's got a cord that plugs in. Yep, that's what I use. There are actually a lot of ways to make your own light boxes using 
clear plastic containers or a sheet of glass, all kinds of things with a flashlight underneath, that can work as a light box too if you don't want to invest in an actual light box because they can sometimes be kind of expensive. I think this one was around $60. It was a birthday gift though, so I don't remember exactly. I just remember sending the link to my boyfriend and being like, I want this. <laughs> when I'm using the light box, I use this tape to tape my pictures down. It's removable magic tape, so it's not very sticky. And so if I want to tape down my drawing into place while I'm tracing over it, this is what I use so it doesn't rip the paper. And my last miscellaneous item is this brush. It's just a Stedler brush. <laughs> and I use it for brushing away eraser dust. So, yep, just a brush. And, oh, one more thing related to painting that I didn't show is this. I got it at Desairs and it folds out and you can put water in it for your brushes. So this is what I use to put water and I don't use a jar or anything and then it has slots in it where you can put your brushes so I really like that there's slots on two sides so it can hold six brushes or all you could put multiple ones in each slot I guess but that is what I use now on to digital art this is my tablet it's a Cintiq 22 HD it's not the touch kind because that would drive me insane and uh, here's the pen it's mounted onto an Ergotron LX arm, and I actually have an extension because normally the arm only comes with two pieces. And that way I can swivel it around, I can lift it, rotate it, pull it forward off the desk. It's quite handy. And I paint in Photoshop CS5. I would like to upgrade to CC really soon though, so that might happen. And I have a line stabilizer extension called Lazy Nazumi Pro. It just makes your lines a little bit smoother and it makes the lines taper nicer because with, in Photoshop when you do a line there's like a weird bulb at the end. It's it's weird. And then I also have another extension which is the Colorless Color Wheel. Uh, in Photoshop CC it actually has a built-in color picker that you can have open at all times. So I think color wheels are a little obsolete now but some have added functions that you might like. But uh, yeah. That's kind of the gist of it. Cintiq 22 HD, Photoshop, Lazy Nozumi, and my colorist wheel. And that is it for what art supplies I use most. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. If you're wondering why I fold these individually, it's because it's actually super annoying folding a stack of them and then separating them out. I find it's much easier to just do them one at a time. And I just do it while some more are printing.